to the Cloud Kingdom. It is the last game of the day. It is our last map in the best of three between Seed and Gumiho, our Terran versus Protoss. And the Protoss player is starting to the top right of Cloud Kingdom in the red. We have starting for the GIM. Eight. Seed. Looking a lot more relaxed now that he was able to tie the series. And this is the game that really counts. The bottom left, we have his opponent. His towel is ready. The Terran player for FXO. He is. FXO Kumiho. That bottle pap sneaks into the camera shot. <laughs> he drinks the same type of water that I drink, actually. Can't think of the brand name right now, but. I have the same bottle cap like always on my desk at home because I throw the bottle away, but for some reason the cap is still there. Isn't that actually the water that the GSL supplies? Because Seed has exactly the same in his booth. Ah, uh, maybe so. I. That's a good point. I do not know. Barracks well, on the low ground. Yeah, wants to be uh, aggressive again, at least uh, with one barracks. The second one may be added as well, but it's starting to look like he just wants to do one barracks pressure. And Seed will, of course, spot it. In every single game so far, he sent out his his uh, scouting probe immediately. And this is actually a position that might not be scouted by Seed immediately. Usually what you do is you sneak into your opponent's main base and then you look at behind the mineral patches or at the mineral patches at the natural. <laughs> Yeah, and he's going to see the barracks at the wall. No command center here. He's going to check top right. Well, he's going to check for gases first. Just make sure it's no gas first build, I suppose. But uh, he needs to do some checking here. Now, can he sends, and he will see it because uh, with the positioning of this, it's yeah, it's yeah. like right where the command center would be. So in some ways, it's like, well, why did you put it there? It's going to be spotted. But at the same time, he can lift it back into his main very easily as well. He knows where the barracks is, he knows that there's one barracks and uh, because he of course countered the SCVs as well. So now the one barracks into expand for Gumiho again. Yep. And Seed is, is going to feel pretty comfortable here now. Uh, he's going to go home, checks just the middle of the map again. A little bit surprised he doesn't check for any sort of additional proxies. Now going to pop in at the watchtower for a second, spot that move out. Chrono Boost now on the warp in technology and of course also onto the uh, one stalker that is currently Chrono Boosting. And uh, he skipped the Zealot this time. So we only have the stalker coming up for him. Yeah, cut a uh, slight, slight little corner there. Uh, his probe did get chased away by the Marine on the Watchtower. This may be something the stalker tries to change, very likely will. Probe tries to escape, the Marine's looking for him, but he's going to get by. Yeah, the bully just trying to take down the probe here. But Gumiho now with two additional barracks in his main base, so he's not going straight for the double refinery. Adds his gas nonetheless, but the barracks have higher priority here for him. He wants to make sure that he has the extra production to fend off any incoming attacks. Probably going to start a bunker very soon at this, at this natural. Whereas we have Seed taking not only the expansion, but also additional gas assimilator in the main base. Both of them, once again, with a very similar build order to what we've seen thus far in just playing a little bit more passive and safe. Uh, and, and the caution that we're seeing for all players is very, you know, it, it indicates that they're just wanting to play game three straight up. Gumiho just with kind of a fake pressure. And Robo before Gates coming out for seed. Wants to put that up as quickly as possible. Not going to be doing his trademark hallucination of mortal push on this map. And we have the double tech labs actually. Two tech labs at two of his barracks. Where did he fly the second barracks to, by the way? Just on the high ground to the right? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. That's where one of the tech labs is being made. Alright, so Stimming Combat Shield probably going to be started very soon. He's going for the Kukasa Shell first. Yeah, I don't want to get hit by one of those. Might give you a concussion, in fact, even. And ah. it'll be terrible because you walk slowly while you feel it. <laughs> what? Those marines should pop some aspirins. <laughs> that usually helps. I heard Stim gives a big headache. You feel really dehydrated afterwards. Stim gives a headache? Yeah. Well, after after is, it's over. Every time player has to research Stim because if there's no Stim, the marines are just in cold turkey and that's basically... Then they're of no use at all. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, and, you know, gotta have those medevacs around. Uh, otherwise, when you have a headache, what are you, you going to do about it? think that Marine can eat an aspirin? He can't open that helmet in space. Well, if Tigers can smoke, 
then Marines can uh, open the helm to, uh, to just get I at think least part one of, Asmund. I think part of the deal Tychus made uh, with uh, Minx allowed him to have some sort of filtration system in his helmet, even though he was a prisoner. Okay. That must explain. I just explained it, guys. That's it. Like, the mystery is solved. There's no more There's no more doubts. There's no more questioning. By the way, Stim started a little bit late here. For so basically, out. the answer to all the questions is from now on, not long uh, 42, but Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> just ask me. <laughs> Fo follow okay. me on Twitter. Uh, tweet at me at ProxWolf for any of your life questions. People ask me a lot about hair, actually, recently. I've been trying to reply to as many of those people as I can. I told you you should be a hairdresser. Um, I'm trying to give people advice, you know. I need to... I need to help people out with this. Double Forge now for Seed. First Immortals are now being built, and at this point he's just starting. He's not going for uh, the... He doesn't have the Twilight Council to set, so we don't see him with the Storm anytime soon. But we have Seed with the Starport, and as soon as he has those Medivacs, he can start dropping two bases for both of them players, and of course also Combat Shield and Stim this time being used. He had the double uh, engineering bay. Now Tech Labs a little bit earlier, but started with the Compressor Shells first. Well, the timing of this is actually exactly lined up. There's a 60 second build time difference between these two researchers, and he is like lined up 60 seconds apart, so they will both finish at the exact same time. Nice. By That's Gumiho. the Twilight Council. A little bit later than he built in the last two games, but plus two, plus two had priority here. Uh, plus one, plus one. Going straight for the upgrades, and this will, with Chrono Boost, give him a nice upgrade advantage over Gumiho. The Terran player is still currently relying on one engineering bay. Will later, as soon as the first one is about to be done, at the armory and the second engineering bay. Yeah, and uh, Gumiho is trying to, to figure out his angle of attack here. He's got a better army supply. He's trying to figure out can I capitalize on this? Can I scare Seed into making his third Nexus later? That's what he's accomplishing right now with this move out. The first medevacs come through here as well. May allow him to drop just a little bit, but that's. You know, it's a choice he doesn't necessarily have to make. It's something that Seed will have to repair for, though, and that's exactly why he's doing it. Third base is coming up for Gumiho as he pushes out and tries to control the map now. Wants to do some pressure, wants to do some damage and just safely expand behind it. But Seed is starting to get ready here. Plus one, plus one is about to be finished. Then he will start the second wave of upgrades while as uh, the, the blink upgrade has just been started. But at this point he doesn't really feel confident moving out. He will just try to stay tight put, and uh, defend against the aggression of Gumiho. The attack here is is spotted. He's got his units on the left side. Factory comes into the right. And Gumiho, with all this pressure, is scaring Seed into passive mode while he takes a third base. Getting Vikings out, actually, a little bit blind here, as there is, of course, no robotic support bay for Seed. There it is, though. So this is actually going to work out a little bit chancily in favor of Gumiho. The army supply, uh, sorry, the worker supply being ahead for Gumiho is of course also a big deal because the extra mules will further increase the income for the Terran player. And with the third base a lot earlier than Seed, he has a great income right now. Yeah. Seed is getting the robotic space, so he wants to add Colossi this time instead of the storm that we've seen thus far in the last two games. Might actually uh, um, yeah, trigger the wrong reaction out of Gumiho if he goes blindly for the Ghost Academy instead of scouting and then starting with his first few meta Vikings. But he actually has two Vikings on the map already. Yeah, he made those two earlier, uh, and then suddenly uh, it's almost as if he wants to use them for warp prism tutorial because of the way he's positioning them. So it was not kind of a premature robotic support bait thing because he made them even before the bay was started. Now he's going into Ghost Academy, and he is going to need to get some sort of hint here or clue about the Colossi, or he's going to find himself in trouble. A simple scan at the natural may suffice. Yeah. I mean, G ghosts are never useless in this matchup, so exactly. you can always use the EMPs, but of course you want to have some Vikings in your composition as well. With the draw play that he's now starting, he will most likely also see what's going on in the army composition of his opponent. Seed now at 120 supply, going for plus 2, plus 2, it's about to be done. And Gumiho is way behind upgrades. As mentioned before, now that this first armor upgrade is about to be completed, he starts the armory, gets the second engineering bay, but he will have to try to catch up with uh, Seed, and uh, Seed will always be ahead in upgrades. But oh! oh, this is a huge win for Seed getting these drops, but he will have to cancel his Nexus. Yeah, the third base is being attacked, but losing those two Medivax is actually a huge deal right now. I thought he would retreat as soon as he saw the Stalkers, but he was busy fighting over here, and therefore he could not retreat in time, losing both Medivacs, and this is basically closing the gap in supply that we had earlier. So well done by Seed, very aware, especially with the Observer that he used at the right side of the map. Yeah, well done. Huge Medivax. And, and Seed has a great amount of 
uh, units out on the map, and he has closed that supply, but he still doesn't have the third mining base since he had to cancel. And this will allow Guma to push ahead the supply once more. Seed needs to win a fight of some kind. You know, taking out those two medevacs is basically like winning a fight, but he's going to have to do it again uh, and, and equalize here a little bit before his Nexus is done. He may have the composition that's good enough to do it. Now the second Starport is being added, and he still only has the two Vikings, though, so... He's going to need a lot more than that with this many Colossi starting to come out. It gives him flexibility though. With the second starboard now he can uh, build a lot more Vikings as soon as he realizes what's coming up. He's basically nearly doubling his production. And uh, if he adds a reactor that is. But the reactor roughly needs the same time to be, be built as another starport. So we'll see if he just goes for free. But he switched the building over. So now he has the double reactor at his starports and can build four Vikings at a time if he has the resources to do so. Which is not the case right now. Double command center now coming up, and at the same time, both of them still being a little bit passive. 106 to 107 uh, supply, both on roughly the same terms. The Twilight Council is being followed up by the Templar Archive now that the first Colossi are already in the game, and extended them lands is about to be finished. They are just gearing up for the for the end game. And the upgrades of Seed are way better right now. 3-3 about to finish ahead of the 2-2 of Gumiho. So there's going to be a moment where it's 3-3 against 1-1. And these, uh, these little groups of units like this are uh, cool for scouting uh, and, and trying to pick off probes, <laughs> but that's not going to be something he can win with. Well, he scouted the Colossi, so if he didn't know about it earlier, he should have, then uh, this is the point where he definitely knows what's going on. So Zealot's doing some damage here. Yeah, exactly. The Zealots in here are actually killing a few of those SCVs. In total, he's lost four of them. This is one way to know whether or not Gumio is pushing or not, depending on how long it takes him to respond here. And this is something that he figures out very easily. He's like, wait a minute, why were my zealots able to do that much damage? You must be still on the map with a larger force. And he's going to catch these units in the middle, but his third base is exposed again. He splits his army in two, pulls the probes away, and the Nexus will still likely fall to the plus one on the, those Marauders. Now he's going right into the main. Nice control here by Gumio. Wow. Oh, feedback. Whoa. Awesome. See, it sees what's going on, and even before Gumiho starts to lift his units into the main base, warps into our Templars, and zip, zip, they're gone. Well done, and see they had in supply with 20, moving in out the third, but the two orbitals block the path. This is starting to look like a problem uh, engagement area for Gumiho, as there's just so many Colossi here. He's struggling to get his Vikings in position. There he goes. Some good volleys here. Nicely done, and the Zealots trying to close distance, but there's so many EMPs and there's no Observer with this army, so the Cloak adds some extra DPS. He's on the chase. He's chasing him back, but here come the Stalkers blinking forward, trying to snipe those Vikings, and now he can start to take down the Marines. Yes, the pure, pure Marines here, and this is a problem because uh, even if Vikings are there, the Colossi just do so much. Where are the Marauders? There's just no more. There are not enough of them. He's trying to build more, but it's a little bit too late. 150 supply against 160, and Seed is going up the ramp now. He is forcing Gumiho back, and the Vikings that he rebuilds, they are just not enough. They are taken down by the Stalkers immediately. Not a single Colossi dead here. And Seed may just take it, man. Taking out Tejan, IPL, Team Marine Challenge 3. Seed. Takes out Gumiho. 